Well, th thanks, Kat and Cad. Uh, I've uh, assured our speakers this is nothing like question time. It is, in <laughs> fact, a, 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 a conversation. But uh, there will hopefully be a bit of time at the end for um, some questions from the floor. But uh, to get us underway, I thought what might be uh, useful is if I asked each of our speakers just to give us a thumbnail sketch of the state of play within their own uh, respective unions and the problems that they face and the mood of their uh, membership. So I'll, I'll ask Christine to kick off. Thanks, John. Well, um, the, the National Union of Teachers is, just in case anybody doesn't know, uh, the largest teachers union organising only qualified teachers and we organise across England and Wales. We have 308,000 members and we organise everyone from early years uh, to post-16 and we work in partnership with our colleagues in UCU. We also work in partnership across the, uh, the unions that organise both in Scotland and in the north of Ireland and, the, and in the Republic. Um, those of you who pay attention to teacher trade union politics will know that there are far too many teacher trade unions fighting for the space uh, to recruit teachers. There are two other uh, classroom-based teacher unions who are both TUC affiliates. There's an organisation that isn't really a union at all, that's not a TUC affiliate, and there are, uh, there are two head teacher unions. Uh, having said that, though, teachers are both here and, and in lots of places in Europe, although not universally, teachers are extraordinarily well organised. We have very dense membership, certainly in, in the UK. We have amongst the densest of membership of any, uh, any organised uh, workforce. I should just say that we were founded, the National Union of Teachers, we are the oldest of these organisations. We were founded in 1870. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is one of the key, uh, one of the key aspects of our aims and objects, which is that uh, we are concerned to pursue policies which are in the interests of teachers, children, and the education service at large, and the wider trade union movement. So that's a reasonably broad canvas. But I'll just say, due to the mention of Colombia by uh, by Cad from the um, Cat from the Holden Society, that we we also in the National Union of Teachers take our international work extraordinarily seriously. And I'm very proud of being the vice chair of uh, Justice for Colombia. Um, and, it, and, and it is, I think, really critical for teachers' unions to have that international perspective, both in terms of solidarity but for other purposes too, because you're right that the most dangerous thing to be in Colombia is a trade unionist, but actually the most dangerous thing to be in Colombia is a teacher trade unionist, as our, as our colleagues, friends and colleagues and comrades in faculty will testify. So that's a kind of, that's a kind of description of where we, who we are. Um, if you read the Observer at the weekend, you will have seen that, um, according to our sister union, the NACWT, morale in teaching is at an all-time low. Uh, actually, if you go into classrooms, you'll find that there's a fantastic amount of completely brilliant work going on. Uh, but it is true that teachers are very much under the cosh. And if you listen to Michael Gove, no reason why you should, and Michael Wilshire last week, you would have heard him say... Uh, you know, it's terrible that in the UK we are the most divided society imaginable, that all of the, uh, all of the serious roles in society are held by people who are privately educated. Uh, he doesn't, of course, make any kind of connection between that and the fact that there is massive inequity in British society. Somehow or other, he's capable of saying that the reason why all these people who are privately educated have all these jobs is because we're not doing a good enough job in the maintained sector, in the comprehensive schools. So that's a big problem for us. And of course, uh, I'm sure that we'll come on to the question of pensions, which is a significant issue across the whole of the public sector. Thanks, Christine. Mark? Um, I'm, I'm the General Secretary of the PCS, uh, which is the Public and Commercial Services Union, founded in 1998. <laughs> I can't quite compete with your 200 years. Uh, which was a union formed of a merger of um, essentially three different civil service unions. There were nine civil service unions uh, around about the beginning of the 80s, and obviously that's now reduced, and PCS represents um, the majority of trade union members in the civil service. Uh, we organise people in government departments, uh, public bodies, increasingly in the private sector where there's been a transfer from public to private, also people in some parts of the, uh, of the voluntary sector. 
Uh, we represent, according to Francis Maud, the lowest paid part of the public sector in the, in the UK. Uh, we have around 100,000 people earning less than £20,000 a year, uh, and we have 30,000 people who are on or around 15000 a year, and we have a number of people who are actually uh, uh, on the national minimum wage. Uh, i just get that in you in case there's anyone who's harbouring under the belief of gold-plated uh, public sector workers. Um, we're organising, as I say, from top to bottom, although we have a lot of low-paid members, we also represent some people fairly fairly uh, high up um, and recently have dealt with obviously a whole manner of, uh, of, of problems, most notably in the public domain at the moment, in the, at the borders, in the ports and in the, in the airports. Uh, and I'm pleased to get the opportunity to say that Ian Duncan Smith's claim that the queues were because they were caught on the hop because the aeroplanes landed at the same time uh, uh, is, utter, is rubbish. Uh, essentially, the story in the airports is the story of the public sector at the moment, is if you cut tens and hundreds of thousands of jobs, then you can't do the same and provide the same service as you could when the people were there. Uh, and although the airports is a, is a very topical example, I hope tonight in talking about austerity that we can also make the point that tens of thousands of jobs are being cut in job centres when unemployment's rising, 30,000 jobs being cut in tax offices when there's a crisis in this country of, uh, of, of lack of resource to collect uh, tax. Uh, and that goes across uh, the public sector. Uh, we are non-affiliated to the Labour Party, uh, but we do represent, I think, a, a brand of trade unionism that actually sees the future as unions becoming much more political, but political does not necessarily mean party political. And in that sense, I'm, I'm personally quite proud that I think we were known uh, as probably the biggest critics of the Labour government. Uh, and we were the biggest critics of the Labour government because, as we can now see, many of the policies they introduced in their time in power have actually just been taken on and developed further by the coalition. Uh, and as such, uh, uh, one of the things I will be wanting to make clear tonight is that for trade unions to be relevant to communities and to members, it seems to me they have to be consistent in opposing privatisation, poverty pay, cuts, uh, and increasingly be prepared to challenge the role of uh, financial markets. And in that sense, if politicians do that, I think our job is to support them. If they don't, I think our job uh, is to criticise them. And uh, to that end, uh, we are about on June the 6th to do something that I think is the first in the trade union movement where we're about to ballot all of our members in a postal ballot seeking authority to actually field candidates as a union in national elections in exceptional circumstances. And I'm sure that will form part uh, of, of stuff we'll say later, John, in the, in the, in the battle for uh, austerity. Uh, I've just come from our executive where we've just called our fourth national strike on pensions for June the 28th. Uh, and obviously, alongside um, Christine, we've we've been one of those unions that has been battling on on the question of uh, public sector pensions. And again, I'm sure that will feature uh, uh, during the evening itself. Uh, Mark, just to pick up a couple couple of points. So, the, the what is the size of your your membership? Our membership now is around two hundred eighty-two thousand. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and Christine, what, what's what's your membership now? Three hundred eight thousand. And are you affiliated to the Labour Party? We are not affiliated to the Labour Party. No. Have you ever been? We have never been, and never I shall be. Been. I don't right. think. Right. Actually, we were quite. I have to say, we were quite late even into the TUC. Um, so, uh, so no, we we are not affiliated, and there is uh, there's never been any enthusiasm to affiliate um, from our membership. I, 